friends, welcome back. This video, we are gonna be covering a lot of terrain because I'm gonna be sharing with y'all every single thing I do to maintain all of this. That means all the daily habits I do, the weekly, the monthly, self-care and beauty treatments that I do to keep myself functioning properly and to look good and feel good. So I'm gonna start off with the daily habits first. These are my non-negotiables. So right when I wake up in the morning, I put on a 15 minute meditation. I think since becoming a parent, I think being as equanimous as I can is probably the most important thing I can do in order to be as present as I can for my son. This is a consistent practice that I've just kept up with because it works on two traits that I'm actively trying to nurture, which are patience and level-headedness. I feel like at this point, everyone knows the, the benefits of meditation. I think it's just about trying to carve out the time to do it. I think the best way that has helped me is just to knock it out as the first thing I do and just like doing it at the same time every single day. So it just like becomes ingrained into your schedule. Yeah, you, you're always meditating, aren't you? Next up, we've got vitamins or vitamins as the British say. This is another habit that I just knock out first thing in the morning or else I will literally forget. I know it's like really difficult to get all the proper nutrients and vitamins from diet only. So I just like to set myself up for success by drinking half of this. I do like two servings in one of these bottles and I give the rest to bed. I also take Rituals Hyacera after I have my first meal. This is like a supplement for my skin and like maintaining that glowiness. Um, I've been keeping up with this for like since May and I've been liking the results. This is my second prescription. We are trying to make this last as long as possible. Let's talk about movement. So I exercise five days out of the week and this is something that has been so beneficial for my mental health, my physical health, and what has helped me be more consistent with this is by having a variety of exercises that I commit to. I would say like I'm in a big strength training era right now. Your girly likes to lift weights, she likes to go on those machines. It's such a great stress reliever. In order to switch things up, I love squeezing in some walks, some runs, some hiking, and of course yoga. I think just stretching and getting the body limber and moving has been so beneficial as well. But another little extra thing that motivates me is by wearing cute workout gear. So in all of the clips that I've shown, I am decked out in Adenola, who is kindly sponsoring this video. I am so excited to show you guys the four outfits that I'm obsessed with, so let's get started. I am officially a unitard convert. I am obsessed with this. I personally love wearing this during yoga because when I'm doing all these like insane poses, like I know that my body is covered. This is also a really great base piece. If you wanna build an athleisure outfit, you just throw on just like a cute, comfy sweater and you can just go from the gym to grabbing smoothies with your girls. Now this is an outfit to wear on a hot girl walk. We are not trying to get run over here. You wanna be blinding. You wanna make sure that people can see you so they don't run over you. Like all these pieces are just so well constructed. Like if you look at the leggings, there's no like seam at the crotch. So no camel toe, don't need to worry about that. And as an eight cup girly, this one shoulder top works perfectly for me. I can jump, I can dance. I can do my sets and I don't have a problem with it rolling over. To make this like a full outfit, you can just add like an oversized hoodie. Like honestly, this is what I look like when I'm going to the gym because in the mornings, it is a little chilly. So I like to have like a hoodie to keep me cozy. This is probably the set that I wear the most because it's very like low maintenance. I could also get like really, really sweaty in this and the marks don't show, especially because it's in this like darker coffee bean shade. I also wanna get these tank bras in all different colors because these are probably my favorite sports bras because again, so supportive, but also comfortable as well. And then for my final look, I am wearing the ultimate tank bra and the leggings in soft olive green. I feel like this is like a good like Pilates girl outfit. Any sort of movement, it just will have you feeling cute and excited to strut your stuff outside. <laughs> 
So those were all the items that I got at Adenola. If y'all are interested, you can use my code GENFREESHIP for free express shipping when you spend 60 bucks or more. I will also leave all the links to everything I wore, including the sizes in the description box. So hit that open. So the last daily habit that I want to share with y'all is to plan for tomorrow. I always like to do this the day before because that way, when I wake up the next day, I know exactly what I'm doing. This whole process takes around like 10 minutes. It's really quick. So what I do is I open up my iCal and then I will manually put it on my bullet journal. I feel like as I'm physically writing it down, I'm kind of like mentally preparing for the day ahead. And I do get this deep satisfaction Xing out all the tasks that I've completed. If you tend to have anxious tendencies, I find that preparation is what helps me keep the anxiety at bay. All right, so let's move on to weekly maintenance things like cleaning my brushes. Okay, so for washing the brushes, I've got this beauty blender cleanser and then this rubber mat stick, which is perfect for really scrubbing those brushes. I gotta admit, before I designated a day for this, I would always put this chore off. And before you know it, it'd be like an obscene amount of time and my brushes would just be hella dirty. The thing is like, even though they're just touching your clean face, over time, it's still a lot of buildup and bacteria to just be on your face. And cleaning them regularly is not only more hygienic, but I find that makeup applies much better when they're clean. I am gonna show you guys my hair care routine because I wash my hair maybe like two or three times a week, especially now that my hair is lighter and more processed. So using a brush, I'm just gonna brush out my hair. I feel like when I use this scalp scrubber, it just does a much more thorough job than using my fingers. I think it's because I've got long nails. So it's literally me just scratching my scalp and thus creating more dandruff. Using this silicone brush just helps you really get in all that grit, but without harming my scalp. So I actually don't use a conditioner. I just go straight to the hair mask. Really, it, it does the same thing, right? So I feel like I'm saving money by just going directly to the hair mask. Okay, I'm using Drunk Elephants. And then I really just try and focus on the mid to the ends. Ah. So I am in my 30s and my skin is something I will always invest in. Thus, the monthly facials. I have been seeing Shinobu for years now and there is no one that does it like her. She'll begin the session by evaluating my skin and seeing what I need. Today, she noticed the usual congestion like on my T-zone, but other than that, we're good. My skin's doing great, so. So now the treatment begins. She starts by steaming to open up the pores and goes in with a gentle cleanser while also giving like a freaking lymphatic massage. It, it feels amazing. <laughs> Now she is exfoliating my face using a chemical exfoliant. This is still really gentle. And now the face is the perfect canvas for some extractions. This is, this is like secretly one of my favorite parts of the facial, even though it's a little painful. I love knowing that all the gunk in my face is getting an eviction notice. All right, so now she's sanitizing using this device. This is like a antibacterial tool so that it keeps all the freshly cleared out pores clean. And now it is time for the lymphatic face massage. Oh my word. Now this is my favorite part. She uses a hyaluronic acid serum with all these peptides in it. So it really sinks into the skin. Oh my days. This is what heaven feels like. Now we're doing a little mask moment. This is amazing for hydrating, cooling, and shrinking back the pores so that your face looks like a porcelain bowl. So today I did a red light treatment. This is supposed to stimulate collagen growth and minimize wrinkles. And while that light is going, she's also spraying oxygen into my pores. 
This is also insane for hydrating the skin. Your girl is going to be moist. It might be dry outside, but not on my face. And now she is wrapping up the facial. She's applying the moisturizers, SPF, and I'm all done. I'm a new woman. My face is so snatched after this. This is what it looks immediately after, and I love it. When I was 17, I told myself that I would be the type of woman who would always have a manicure and pedicure done. I can't remember who influenced me, but I've kept this random commitment since then. So I get my nails done roughly every four to five weeks. I always go for a simple and a solid color because I am just trying to be in and out of there. But honestly, like having my nails done is 100% a psychological thing. I just feel more put together and I get genuine satisfaction of seeing my hands and toes polished. It's just a little treat to myself. I get my roots touched up every four to five weeks with Anna at Chaz Dean Studio. I have been going to Anna for almost a decade, which is crazy to say out loud. She always uses a custom mix for my color. It's this rich caramel brown and I'm obsessed. And the thing with hair is that everyone has their own specific color and result because every strand of hair is different depending on the texture, hair history. There's definitely an art around it. And right now I am loving to maintain this color. I think my hair goals now is just to grow it out long and, and then maybe go lighter. I don't know, we'll see. Every month I book myself a massage. It is by far my favorite way to alleviate stress. For a long time, I undervalued the effect of physical touch. Like I didn't realize how much stress and tension was just knotted and locked in my body. This experience is so healing because it's a way for me to reconnect with myself and give my body that reset button it needs to function at its best. I literally feel so relaxed. I feel like my version of heaven is on Willia's table. Like it is euphoric, like absolutely euphoric. Can you be addicted to getting massages? Probably. I feel like touch is more important than we think. Out of all the love languages, I feel like touch was at my bottom, was like my bottom two along with gifts. But now I think touch is bumped up. Wilia was the first massage therapist that I went to where I actually wasn't laughing hysterically on the massage table because I've been always I've always been very very ticklish like no one would be able to grab my knees or you know or even like hugs felt uncomfortable when I was growing up and maybe it's because it just wasn't you know a part of my childhood you know like I know my parents love me but in an Asian household like you don't really hug like to this day if I ask I always have to ask my mom for a hug and then I always and my mom always leaves this gap between us so when I hug her, I literally have to squeeze her, but it's because her parents never hugged her. So it's this kind of like healing of this generational trauma. So therapy is something that I generally do every other month, at least in this season of life. I think it's because I'm not actively working on anything right now. I do feel like I'm in a season of bloom, as I've mentioned in the past. But when I first started therapy back in 2017, I was going every other week. There were a lot of inner demons that I wanted to sort out before I got married. And so therapy then at that pace made sense. And I was also going every week during my postpartum phase. But I would say the pace that I have right now, this is enough to just like maintain my mental health because I don't know about you, but I have a lot of thoughts. And if I don't say those thoughts, then they build up. You know, like a lot of times, like I'll write them down or I'll call a friend, call umma, tell it to Ben. But I'm realizing as I get older, sometimes you have to be like specific on what information you deposit to people. Having this chunk of time where a licensed professional is really like deeply listening, metabolizing my thoughts, and then like processing them back to me is so incredibly healing. And so that is, that is the, the main reason why I will always invest in therapy. I know the common rule to go to the dentist is just to go twice a year, but I like to go four times a year for a teeth cleaning and a yearly checkup. Because no matter how diligently I brush or water pick and floss at home, there are still crevices in my teeth that are really difficult to reach. And I know many of us hate the dentist because it sucks getting dental work done, but 
You can prevent this by being consistent with your oral hygiene and by going for regular cleanings. Then it actually becomes fun because you know you're just getting your teeth cleaned and you're not about to drill anything. Yay. All right, I think those were all the activities that I do to keep myself looking and feeling tip top. If you guys do any self-care beauty treatments, please write them in the description box. I would love to know what you guys are up to and maybe I will start incorporating that into my lifestyle as well. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.